Hello, and welcome to Saving People, Queering Things, a Supernatural podcast. We were previously known as Driver Picks the Podcast, and the episode you're about to listen to was recorded under that name. Though our name has changed as of season three, our show hasn't changed that much. Our structure and theme-based discussions are the same, and we're so glad you're here. Now, let's get on the road. Hello, and welcome to Driver Picks the Podcast, the show where we talk about ghosts, road trips, and free will through every episode of the TV series Supernatural. Today, we will be discussing Season 1, Episode 11, Scarecrow, through the theme of heroism. And with this episode, we are officially halfway through Season 1, which is very exciting. Yay! I am Abigail, your host. Joining me today is my sister Sam, who has been with us for a few episodes now. Mm -hmm. And we also have a new friend joining us, uh, Jacob, who's a friend of ours and our first co-host to be entirely new to the show. Ooh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. Have you uh, seen I, any of the show? Uh, I have seen like two episodes. I, I'm Jacob, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had this cool intro where I was going to, I was going to open my beer and I was going to crack it right in the mic because nice. that's apparently, you know, everyone loves some good, good old ASMR. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that'd be cool. But I, you are I forgot about it. I was going to ask if I could borrow like a cone of Coke, oh. uh, can of Coke just for that bit, but I, that'd be a, a waste of some good old, uh, corporate coke but that's okay <laughs> now you got to just talk about the bit which also works yeah now everyone can imagine it happening yeah exactly. do so. a sound effect you said you've seen an episode like years ago but you didn't remember when it was from yeah i can't remember the specific season i remember uh how into spoilers are we well not spoilers but just like i i remember Sam's hair being extremely long and flowy. <laughs> not really a spoiler. It yeah, it's not really a spoiler. <laughs> um, That's not a plot spoiler. We're only like, warning for plot spoilers if they're important. So, but my friends, all the, all of my friends that in like high school were obsessed with the show, <laughs> so they talked about it a lot. Um, and I was there, and I that was the extent of it. I'm like, I'm here, and they're talking about it, and it sounds interesting. Yeah, so <laughs> got a little by osmosis. Well, you're the same age as me, and so we were your friends would have been into it around the same time that I was originally into it yeah. as well. Uh, so yeah, as a, as a new host, anything you are looking forward to as you join us or going into this episode? I'm stoked to have no clue what's going on <laughs> and to uh, honestly make fun of the show because there are so many things. Boy, <laughs> boy, oh boy, early 2000s. That really took me back this episode <laughs> uh, right off the bat uh, with those frosted tips. <laughs> um there's some good style choices people are making yes, this episode. yes i around. i love a good uh good a good romp of making fun of making fun of some early 2000s crap mm. so not i'm sorry not crap i know this is a podcast about a show that you loved <laughs> it's not... okay you're allowed to razz on it it's also, it's oh, also perfect. a decent amount of crap perfect okay <laughs> that's good to know because yeah this episode will probably be heavier on the making fun of supernatural front hell yeah <laughs> which is let's, all right let's destroy this show <laughs> so it is now time for our series recap the road so far and since jacob came into this episode without having seen anything and i had forgotten that this episode does not have it previously on he basically had no idea of the previous 10 episodes other than the little whispered bits of context that I was giving as we watched so this will also be a recap for him I mean it's an early 2000s show so it kind of told you what was happening without yeah. having to tell you what was happening yes yes and uh yeah so I I have an idea yeah of what happened yeah but for those of you if you are joining us and you haven't watched the show in a while or you are totally new to it if for some reason you've decided to join us and you've never seen any episodes and you started here Here's a little bit of a series recap. So this story is about two boys, the roads of America and one mission to find their father. When Mary Winchester died at the hands of a supernatural being in 1981, John Winchester took his two sons and began a life of hunting the thing that killed her, as well as any other evil thing he came across from vampires to angry, angry spirits. But now in 2005, his youngest son, Sam, a Stanford student has also lost the love of his life to the same monster that killed Mary. 
Sam, along with his seasoned hunter older brother Dean, have been searching for their missing father for five months while he sends them increasingly cryptic messages and dodges any real life meeting with them. So Sam and Dean have been continuing on the road, saving people and hunting things, but tensions between them are continuing to grow as Sam's desire for revenge and frustration with John's absence clashes with Dean's commitment to hunting. In the previous episode, Sam and Dean were asleep in a motel room when they received a call directly from John, the first in months. And that brings us to this episode. All right, first, first things first, uh, for those who are aware of The Walking Dead, I would like to point out that <laughs> the dad is already suspect for being cast as uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. So <laughs> This was prior to The Walking Dead. I know, but like... But yes. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Jeffrey Dean Morgan immediately is a suspect character in anything he plays. It's true. He's typecast a little bit. Yes. So I mean, he is a little sus from the beginning. Oh, every instance so. we've gotten to hear about him. But we're going to, before we jump into full episode discussion, we're going to do our 30 second recap. So in this segment, each of us takes a turn <sighs> recapping oh, the events of the episode. I hate this part. This is my least favorite part. I'm right. sure I complain about it you every complain, single I had to cut like five minutes of you complaining about <laughs> this every episode. Well, But that's content. That's I know. so funny. I haven't cut all of it. I just okay. had to cut so it's not like five straight right. minutes of... How about, how about, you don't want five minutes of me complaining? No, how about, how about, we, how about we, we do the segment and then we complain about it for five minutes. Oh, after? Yeah. Okay. And then we good can keep plan. it in. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, now you have to keep it in. Okay. Jacob and I will just complain about okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, and that will be the rest of the podcast. <laughs> just be you complaining about yes. the fact that you had to do a 30 second recap? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I see how this is going to go. This, yeah. <laughs> oh. We're going to start our own podcast uh, complaining about your podcast. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I mean, <laughs> <that's> it, hilarious. <laughs> I mean, maybe it'll, bring in, maybe it'll bring in listeners to our podcast. So, you know. Yeah, to see. I'm, I'm not going to bash your podcast because I'm on the podcast and I'd like to be on it again. So. Yeah, so yeah, don't yeah, don't burn your bridges. Yeah. <laughs> um, I suppose I can start for the 30 second recap. We're drinking white wine, the drink of podcasters everywhere. I'm drinking beer. Is it? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sarcasm. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, didn't... Jacob's Jacob's drinking beer. Drinking the beer, beer that he cracked during the during the episode. Yeah, definitely cracked. All right. Yeah, cracked. I am ready, Sam. Do you want okay. to come in? Three, two, one, go. So John has finally reached out to Sam and Dean and has told them that it is a demon that killed Mary and Jess and that he is going after it, but he does not want them to come with him, which leads to a big fight between Sam and Dean because Sam wants to go and find him and Dean does not. And John is trying to send them on a case. So Dean goes to this town to find this... Um, scarecrow pagan god and save these this village and sam goes off and meets this strange girl and then eventually comes back ends up rescuing dean and they end up setting fire to this tree that gets rid of this pagan god nice wow what better than i expected <laughs> covered most things yeah you did okay are you ready sam oh, fuck no i hate that i've Can covered most things me? no that's not how this works not how this works you only get better well you took it all no that just means i did not talk i didn't barely talk about meg i didn't really talk about the main plot line meg? Just, which one's meg meg's the girl that Sam which met. oh okay cool the blonde yeah, i don't remember what the other girl's name was okay. blondie yeah. yeah yeah i didn't talk blondie about we're both other. blonde yeah Jacob. blondie and other blondie yeah short-haired blondie and long-haired blondie. yeah oh my gosh guys Show do not up. identify the women no. like that please no meg and i can look up what the other girl's name is but emily yeah emily I think it's Emily. See, so I pay like, attention. How many times have you watched this episode? Not many times. Actually. Emily. Yeah, it's Emily. Just, At least twice. I'm just super gay and I remember <laughs> all the girls. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you take it away and now just talk about yeah. your interest in this episode? I'm sorry. I'm just all the girls. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one, go. Okay. So the beginning of the episode, the brothers find out that... Um, John has found the person who um, killed their mother and it's a demon. And then John sends them on a hunt for a creepy scarecrow and um, duh, this is so stressful. I'll say anything. Else. And then they kill the scarecrow and, and they have a lot of drama along the way and a lot of feelings. 
Okay. Okay. I have. I am. I am ready to go. I know exactly where where I'm going with this. Okay. 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 I will count you in. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Fade in. Burkittsville, Indiana, one year ago, a married couple, Holly and Vince Parker, are leaving a cafe, which is next to a gas station. With them is an older couple, Harley and Stacy George uh, Georgeson, and their teenage niece, Emily. Stacy, and before you leave, one of our apple pies. She hands Holly a box on the out on, on the house. Holly, oh my God, thank you so much. Stacy, you're welcome. Holly to Vince. Hey, we should get lost more often. I mean, everyone in this town is so nice. Vince. What the fuck was that, Jacob? What? I'm giving a recap of the show. Are you reading from a script? <laughs> oh my gosh, is that? It's just the script. It's the transcript. It's the transcript. I'm just <laughs> like instantly. This, this is what. So I'm just going to be doing this like for. We're all going to kind of go around and do this for 30 more seconds. And that's the episode, right? That's the yeah. whole podcast is just. That's what I thought. No, no, did you? Were you listening to what was happening when we were going? No. Jacob, pay attention. I was looking up for the, the script. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, you have like the, <laughs> the whole, whole thing. Script. It's the whole you thing. You found it really fast. Okay, Act originally, one, originally I was going to just read oh Moby God. Dick. <laughs> but I was oh. like, okay, that's a little bit too out of the way for This was like a just bit. enough this out of like, the way? Yes. No information in that <laughs> at all. What? It was the first, it was we the got We got that it was Burkittsville, Indiana. Yes. And that, that the original worked. two uh, people were those were their names holly and vince that i did not know that that was their names <laughs> wow they're very really? forgettable and, they die in the first 30 seconds oh, very and, hold important on, hold on, hold to on. the we plot. also got a whole conversation about pie well actually the two yeah the two two of actually the main characters of the village it's true. harley and stacy jordanson and their teenage niece oh. emily okay who apparently have got the hot score <laughs> uh, <laughs> i didn't say it you did no i didn't i just said i remembered her name you said i pay attention to the female because, because i'm gay <laughs> yes <laughs> so yes. okay yes all right fine <laughs> I, I am right so we're gonna talk about this episode now that we've been recording for <laughs> half an hour i told you this episode was gonna be off but anytime you have me on there you're it's gonna, gonna be... be off the rails <laughs> just gonna be off... oh and I'm, I'm excited to get you with some people you all right <laughs> oh my god i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> well, I am laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, you're gonna have so much I'm editing so much to editing. do on this. Episode. Episode. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep that in, but I'm gonna have to like keep. I'm gonna have to edit around the extemporaneous our, stuff. But I'm, there's gonna be a- our side note. <laughs> so it is now time for us to discuss this episode. <laughs> our Moving on. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 we gotta keep. Oh, we gotta. We gotta, we gotta keep, keep the laughter in. This is a mess. It is now time. <laughs> now that I, Shh, Jacob, given the entry for this segment four times, it's now time for us to discuss this episode through our chosen theme. So every week we pick a theme before we watch the episode, and we talk about where we see it in the episode, how directly we see it, blah blah blah, all that fun stuff. This week our theme is heroism. And I have some notes as always. And so, yeah, the theme of heroism. Um, this is an interesting theme for any episode of Supernatural because this show is about sort of these heroic characters or like what characters are being painted as heroic in the sense that they're like, you know, there's the good guys and there's the bad guys in every episode and our main characters are usually presented as the good guys. And so we have that sort of like hero idea. There's going to be later episodes um many many times throughout the show where someone that they're rescuing is going to be like so you guys are like heroes there's going to be like that's going to be a common thing that they're going to be people are going to say to them that they're heroes and they're going to kind of have varying reactions to that um so yeah any um initial thoughts on like heroism the lack thereof the opposite of in this particular episode well, I mean, it feels like at this point, it seems like it's obviously because it's season one, it's pretty early on. So it's like they're not really established as heroes. No. And like, obviously, the town doesn't think of them as heroes because, like, you know, they're trying to keep the town alive by sacrificing random people that come to town rather than their own people, obviously. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> and I so. Think- 
So they think they're heroes. They think that they're heroes in themselves, but they do not think, but they, they don't like that these people are coming in to try and stop mm-hmm. them because, mm-hmm. you know, they think that they're going to, they're all going to die if they don't, you know, sacrifice people. Yeah. Try and... to be the heroes for the greater good. It's that whole, that whole callback. I don't, oh, I think Hot Fuzz was after this because that was, that, that immediately was like, as soon as they were like, for the greater good, it's like, that's the whole trope that Hot Fuzz takes. Yeah, I think that Hot Fuzz is a couple of years later than this, yes. but it is a, a pretty cool connection. I'm, I'm pretty sure Hot Fuzz took that from something else that's also yeah. pretty popular, but I can't put, I can't figure out what, I can't remember what that is yeah. from. But. I mean, it's a really common trope, this idea of like, <clears throat> you know, things, thing, and the ends justifying the means if you're doing it for the right reason. And I think mm-hmm. that's what this town is doing, is they're able to paint themselves as the heroes in their own minds because they're saving this whole town and all they're doing is sacrificing a couple of random, you know, yeah. Well, they also, every year. They yeah. also do say like the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Yeah. 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 They, they very specifically, they're the, the, um, older woman who is, um, Emily's aunt. Emily's aunt. Hold on. I you know have, her name. You I know her recap. name. Harley Georges and, Harley Jorgensen. Jorgens. I think it's Jorgensen. No, it's not Jorg- Jorgensen. Jorg- I, yeah, I think they pronounce it Jorgensen. 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 Yeah, that's yeah. So right. Har- uh, Stacy Jorgensen, because that's the Harley. Harley's the. Baby. Both of them are like both guys and like both of them are like. Both of Stacy's the the. It is. It the is Stacy. Oh, okay. Okay. So Stacy Jorgen Jorgensen, um, says you know the when they are sacrificing when they're attempting to sacrifice her niece and dean to appease the the god they say she says you know the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few and which is a very direct star trek reference um of course the like heroism link here is that in star trek and in you know lots of other narratives the you know sacrifice isn't heroic when you're sacrificing someone else when you are, when they're not making the choice, like we, we sacrifice means something when you're choosing it and that makes you a hero. You don't, you won't become a hero by sacrificing someone else. And they have this sort of impression that like, this is hard, just as hard for us as this is for you. But you know, it's not, they're not the ones getting sacrificed. <laughs> so yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so a lot of the, this is going to be a little bit of a harder link to heroism, but I think it's the biggest, like the meat of this episode is there is a conversation with Sam and Dean at the beginning when they argue, when they have a conversation with John and then they argue and then Sam goes on his own. And then there's also the conversation Sam and Meg have at the bus stop about their family lives. I keep forgetting who Meg is. But I, I, the, I do remember now, but every time you say it, I'm like, who the hell is Meg? Meg is the girl. Short blonde hair. The girl. short blonde haired girl who meets Sam on the side of the road when he's hitchhiking and then meets him again in the bus stop and then kills a dude at the end. So Meg is obviously not what she seems and obviously knows a lot more. Like, obviously, <clears> it's premeditated that she's meeting up with Sam. It's not a coincidence that she runs into him twice. Yeah. Even um, though her back was turned and she had headphones on. Yeah. She clearly knew he was going to be there. Or something, and she knows more about him. She knows about Dean as well, and she knows she knows things. Um, but there's, <coughs> um, but anyway, I was trying to think about the conversations, particularly between the boys, about what to do because I think Sam's reasoning for being like we've got to go to be with we've got to go find John is because like he's like we have been looking for so long and now dad, dad's finally called us he's finally told us what's going on there's a demon we've got to like dad's gonna take care of it but like there's no way I'm gonna let him just do that on his own I'm gonna I've got to be there and Dean has the opposite reaction of like well dad told us not to and also sent us on this case where we could go and save these other people so that's important and I was trying to see like I think they both want to think that there's a almost a right or a wrong answer. Like there's almost like a heroic answer and not a heroic answer, but there, I don't know that there is. Like I can understand mm. both of their reasonings. Well, yeah, it's it's a classic. 
I don't know if I would say trope, but it well, it is like it's a classic trope in TV shows of having like in like in any sort of narrative of having having two equally um, uh, two problems or two conflicts that are equally uh, um, like personally uh, valid valid for both of these people to be concerned about. Yeah. And they're just taking either side. Yeah. Like there would be no conflict if they both took the same side. And so yeah. it's a classic trope that the, t- that the show does. And I'm assuming they do it probably multiple times throughout the yes, series. That will be a common, yeah. common thing. Is and where... multiple shows do this. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's, but it's a good one because yeah. like it, it creates that tension um, as long as, obviously, as long as the show doesn't continue to keep doing that as its only way of creating tension between these two characters yeah which they're going to do lots of different ways of creating tension between them and this is really um you haven't seen the previous episodes but this is really a lead up of like sam's focus throughout this whole season has been like we've got to find dad and dean's focus has been we've got to do the job and eventually we'll find dad Mm -hmm. um because sam has been and and also like one thing that didn't get mentioned in our kind of series recap and that you wouldn't actually know is that um four years before this episode, Sam went off on, Sam left for college. Like, di- John didn't want him to leave and he chose to leave his family and like go off to college because he wanted to have a normal life. Mm-hmm. And like and he, cut all ties. Yeah. Like didn't mm-hmm. talk to them at all. Yeah. So the pilot opens when they, the first time they've seen each other in four years. So this is not the first time that, that Sam has been like, I need to do what I think is important. And I'm going to like leave and do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. If someone's gonna make that decision, I'm gonna make that decision. Mm-hmm. I, I've got a, a hot take, a theory. Yeah. As you will, as being someone who hasn't seen very many, I, and I don't want any sort of hints or okay. potential like, yeah, that is probably true. I'm mm-hmm. just gonna say it, and then we can move on. But I think that the Dean, Dean's the older Dean, one, short-haired guy. Yeah. Uh, I think he's attempting to not have to see papa uh papa jeffrey for um (laughs) for as long as he can because he doesn't want to deal with the family stuff and that put having this kind of as like a constant uh having all these like these missions all these detours quote unquote detours Mm -hmm. is kind of a way to postpone having to deal with the traumas that happened with the family and with sam and his girlfriend and with having to see old papa jeffrey so that's my that's my theory that's your theory i just from this one episode that's kind of something that i could see from that right from there well he's really because he was just very like like blinders just kind of went okay we're doing this mission i don't want to see dad we need to just yeah do this well and and something that's been pointed out to me before by other people who have watched this episode is that even the body language in the scene where they're talking on the phone so sam's talking and sam's arguing back and forth with john oh, sam's arguing nice. going like no like we've got to come like blah blah blah. they go back and forth and then dean takes the phone and the first shot of him with the phone he's like dad like where are you and he see he's like fairly relaxed body language he's concerned and then john says something and he straightens up like his whole posture straightens up he stiffens up and then he goes yes sir and then he says almost nothing he just says yes sir sure gets the gets writes the writes the yeah. names down and then hangs up the phone like he barely says 10 words to john after that so like i think your theory is really interesting to think about in that context because i think there's a lot of clues that he mm-hmm. that there's maybe it's maybe not just about like doing the mission it's maybe yep. an avoidance strategy mm-hmm. that's definitely something that i noticed and kind of took note of is like the very visible like change in behavior and reaction that he had Mm-hmm. Sam's much more emotionally open and volatile. And he's yes. angry, but he's very visibly angry with yep. John. Yep. And with Dean. He's angry with Dean that Dean won't be angry. That Dean isn't angry. That Dean's mm-hmm. not doesn't seem to be taking this seriously. That Dean's like willing to just like let their father well, go. Well, Dean also just seems like a very emotionally closed off man. I was so. just gonna say he just pushes everything down. Classic yes. men, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not emotionally closed off, as you probably as I know you know. <laughs> <laughs> I cry on a regular basis. <laughs> Tears are good. It's okay. They they're gonna 
The boys are going to get there. There's going to be a fair amount of crying in the show. Hell oh, yeah. they get there. Fairly so soon, many emotions. That's also something that I, I've talked to you, Abigail, about. Um, I keep saying you and pointing, but I know that the viewers at home don't know what I'm ta- who I'm talking to. <laughs> you, Abigail, that the episode I watched was like later seasons. And not only were was Sam's hair flowing and beautiful, their voices were so deep. And like it genuinely sounds like they had like a bass booster in each of their voices and were so deep. And I'm like, man, once these guys have an emotional breakthrough, it's going to be beautiful having their deep voices and, and wailing and crying and and it is, and it is. I my my guess from when you probably would have seen that episode is that you would probably watch an episode around season seven or eight, that which is right. it would, yeah, mm. would make sense for the length of Sam's hair and also the deep voices of them both. It was comically deep. Like I did, genuinely did not expect their voices to be that deep when I watched. <laughs> I laughed out loud when I first heard them because well, I was like, this is. Oh, this is unrealistically low. I think as someone who's like watched the show and like when I watched the show originally, I watched it from the beginning. I, because their voices don't start out that deep, mm-hmm. they start out a little more baby voices and they developed over time. I don't think I noticed like how deep they got. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I can hear the contrast now, but it doesn't like, doesn't kind of, like I think if I had heard it like the first time yeah. and it didn't seem that deep, I would maybe also have been like, that's a little bit strange. Also, also can you put my voices that deep just so, just, because I want to sound like them because I want to be cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if you help me with the editing, you could do that. Absolutely. I'm just going to put a big bass booster right on my voice. So Your voice like just that. sounds like a 40-year-old. <clears throat> it's just going to be distorted the entire time. Oh, dear. It's gonna sound... <laughs> Everyone's going to be like, who is this person? It's going to sound like when you're when you're trying to like uh, hide your voice from someone. Yeah. That yeah. Really deep voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you're trying to do the like I'm calling for the ransom money yeah, voice. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the conversation that Sam has with Meg in the bus stop because they, it's a, this is, this show so far has been developing who Sam is as a person significantly more than it's been developing Dean so far. We're going to get more of like Dean centric character development starting in actually the very next episode. Uh, a uh, question yeah is this the first episode that meg has been in this is the first episode yes. meg has been in we have okay. never we have not met cool. meg before okay yeah so meg comes up with this and we can assume that there is some level of falsehood in the story that she tells sam because of what we get revealed at the end of the episode that she's not she she knew about sam she knew she knew stuff about their family before she met sam we can presume based on what she says in her, you know, phone call to whoever she's talking to, who she calls, who she, yeah, who she calls father in that scene, in the last scene of the episode. Um, But so she, so she presumably comes up with this whole story to try and connect with Sam in the bus stops. She talks about having a a family who is like really controlling and, you know, wanted, and she says, you know, they wanted the best for me, but that's not what I wanted, which I hadn't noticed before that it's not that she says like they wanted the best for me but like they didn't know what was best for me she was like they wanted the best for me but that's not what I wanted Hmm. and she's playing on I think something interesting with Sam because Sam has always wanted things that his family didn't want um but he's mostly wanted them because he thought they would be better and Hmm. I just think that's an interesting the way she kind of tries to frame that um Hmm. I don't really have a follow-up thought there I'm um I'm curious to hear Jacob what you like initially thought about that scene because I know more context on Meg so I knew from off the bat when she was telling that story Mm -hmm. that she was playing Sam oh okay um Uh, I did well here's the problem you guys were pretty well I I knew that she was a recurring character yeah. because oh, you guys yeah. were like oh I love Meg because we got excited you got excited about it it's hard to which which I'm not I'm not I'm not Megging you uh yeah no i'm not gonna like obviously you know that happens in shows um yeah. but like i didn't know the extent of yeah. her you don't know what kind of character she yeah. is but you know she's important more important yeah. than just like a random so person. i thought uh during that scene i thought she was i did thought she was genuine and when she was like it's well acted yeah by like, like the character was, and the actress yeah i thought that it was like okay yeah she's trying to like um what's the word uh relate to his situation um Mm -hmm. and so to try and 
to try and you know get him to stay with her for whatever reason mm-hmm. even though she she was yeah being kind of weird when they first met um yeah which in retrospect is a little bit of a weird tack to take like she's very weird she's she's but i think it makes sense because it would have been weird like in some ways maybe more suspicious if she had instantly trusted sam and tried to cozy up to him and like tried to connect with him in that initial scene because it's true he's like a six foot four dude i I think i think her i what i think happened is i think the initial was like okay yeah i met up with him we've connected then she went with this random dude you know knowing she was gonna off him and then talk to talk to papa whoever i think it's papa papa jeffrey um oh. also when i say papa jeffrey i mean john yes because it's yeah. jeffrey d morgan yes i appreciate um, the, yeah. the moniker you like, yeah, yeah papa assigned jeffrey. to him it's I much hope, better i hope you use it for I continuing episodes would like to um i would like to papa jeffrey. It's, it just makes him comically it's just it's just a good it just makes him comically cartoonish yeah which is it's just rather fitting exactly. if you know anything about john yeah um, we we have not. We've made our opinions on John fairly clear in this yes, podcast. Yes, absolutely. Far. I mean, yeah. I uh, I don't like John. Not a great dad. That's Jeffrey Dean Morgan is an incredible actor. Oh, that's Jeffrey why Dean I Morgan don't like. So that's good. why I don't like John. Cut Anyways, to- um, so yeah, I I think I think I think she's talking to Papa Jeffrey, uh, but that might not be true. It might be someone else. Um, but yeah, so I think that you know she did that to call Papa whoever to say like I met up with him. Uh, and I've made and I've connection. Ma- I made connection. I've made a connection just to like update whoever. Mm-hmm. Well, she says know. in that call too. She says like I could have taken them both. So there's this like, what does she entirely mean by that? Like it's that you, she's mm-hmm. you know, what what was her objective? And she's obviously being held back from from what she really wanted to do. And Sam, you've been kind of edging to get in here, so say your piece. Well, I have a something to say but it's like a spoiler because it's talking about future meg well then don't say it because i haven't seen future meg okay i really want to know why you were gonna whisper it whisper it to it okay you can tell me later sam i want to know i'm sorry i'm sorry (laughs) is it like i know i I can't say that because it'll give you the yeah it's okay you can tell me later i can try to be very vague I mean, to be honest, I don't really care too much. I mean, about okay. like, so, so this will be, there will be, be wary of spoilers for the next, you know, minute. Spoiler alert. You can put a big, like, burr, burr sound effects right here. <laughs> In that conversation, I don't think it was entirely playing, maybe not entirely playing Sam with that conversation. Mm. Um, because in later episodes, as we find out more about Meg, there is this kind of struggle that she has with her family, yeah, I, family and her father and orders. Yes. And we see this struggle with her not always wanting to follow orders. And, and so I don't know if that was in. So she's playing on some, some, some real stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, and she's, and she's, she's one of the other, we've had a lot of characters mirror Sam so far mm-hmm. in this season. We've had a lot of characters that have been set up to show us more about who he is and to give a like, either something that like really reflects his true character or that kind of gives you a warped view on his character and like what he could be and Meg is another one of those where you're like are they similar are they different and like that's kind of the See, question. okay so that's something that's that not like, really it's not really spoilery sense. because that's just kind of I, it's so it's, it's obvious to me that that's her character what her character is like and right. what her development will be is that she has probably she probably wasn't lying about no, a lot of entirely. the things she's talking about no not mm. entirely and so it makes sense that she said those things, but it mm-hmm. might have been like a su- like a subconscious like cry for help. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. like I think, that's... and I think maybe just even the self awareness, like it, it, you yeah. know, she's where she knows she's made her decision as to what direction she's going to go, but that doesn't mean she doesn't also still, mm-hmm. you know, have this, yeah. you know, internal struggle about the orders that she's been given. Well, even in the call that she makes, we see as she's kind she of arguing and she's like, well, I, I, I had them both. I could have gotten them. And then mm-hmm. she, we don't hear what this voice tells her, but, but she kind of goes quiet for a second and she's like, okay, okay. And kind of is like, interesting. Kind mirror. of following orders as well. Interesting as, mirror to yeah. both Sam and Dean, because in mm-hmm. their phone call with, with John at the beginning of the episode, Sam argues with John, Dean, 
almost argues and then and then shuts Comprise. up and she does the same yeah. she kind of argues and then she shuts up mm-hmm. yeah that's true uh beer update i am taking a sip everything's okay <laughs> you survived everything's it okay. good job <laughs> is it a good beer it is actually quite good um okay so uh, unless you have any other thematic stuff to talk about we are going to move into our going meta segment so we have kind of covered some of this stuff already so we'll kind of fly through some of these we are tracking some more some character stuff and talking about some of the fun pop culture stuff of the show first off uh and so sam i'll let you do updates on ones that are you'll know and then i'll let you jump in for a couple of them as well jacob okay. um so sam significant deaths um any significant mm, character deaths in this episode nope uh excuse me holly and vince they were significant <laughs> humans to me oh i'm so sorry yes all of the deaths are significant because they are people and we value people but, but none of them are significant, significant characters. characters we never see them again those actors put their heart and soul in those okay characters. jacob this is not what this segment is <laughs> i'm here to just dis- Assemble the segments. No, <laughs> just cause chaos. Cause chaos. Which you are successfully doing. Okay. Moving on. Uh, second is the the <laughs> Bechdel test. So we have explained the Bechdel test in a few episodes. So I'll explain mm-hmm. it now. Okay. Bechdel test is a way of kind of looking at how female characters are treated in stories. It's a very low bar test to determine whether or not characters are even on screen and having speaking roles and that sort of thing. And so to pass the Bechdel test, a piece of media has to have two named female characters. They have to have a conversation with each other about something that is not a man. So if you have two girls that talk about a boy, it doesn't count. Does this episode pass the Bechdel test? What is the length of conversation? It does not, there's not a length. It, it, again, super low bar. Super, super low, low bar. bar. Emily and Stacy had a conversation about not dying. Emily and Stacy have a conversation about not dying. Okay, I'd episode. like to challenge that. Because okay. she wasn't specifically talking to Stacy. She was talking to like both of but her But Stacy was uncle. talking to her and I... was making points to her. That's true. I Yeah, this was yeah, where I thought about that as yeah. well. And I was like, it's would, not a great passing of the test. I would say Stacy talked to her. I don't I don't even remember Harley saying anything. No, it's it's entirely Stacy pretty much. Because I'm pretty part. sure Harley is just holding the gun at right. Stacy's. That's and, true. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, and Dean's kind of in the conversation, but she's more addressing Stacy because Dean's not challenging the fact that they're um, doing this. Like, Dean sort of knows that they're going to do this regardless, whereas... whereas Emily is pleading with them. I have number two. Oh, is there oh a second? Oh my gosh, you have your script. Is there I a second time? Script. I appreciate that you have the literally script. Literally the first. Research. The, I've done my research. I did it like literally at the start of the podcast. <laughs> you... uh, the <laughs> first conversation is with Stacy Jorgensen and Holly. Because Stacy says, and before you leave, one of our apple pies, she hands Holly a box. And Holly says, oh my God, thank you so much. You are welcome. So this episode passes it solidly one time okay. and pretty solidly a second time, which is actually better than most of the episodes have so far. Yeah, I feel mm-hmm. like there has not been that. This many show's episodes. not There's had. Not. So far. We've had. I think we've had three. This might be the third episode that's passed out of eleven. It gets better. I mean, not really, but like considering it the... passes more and more. Yeah. Does it's, it? It 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 will pass the Bechdel test more and more. It there are. Still... I suffer and it's yeah i feel like what is better really, better female characters that's what i really mean is there are more female characters introduced that like stick around and that have significant roles yeah yeah which is 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 true um whereas Rebecca, like really up until this point none of the female characters have stuck around it's all been like victims one and done yeah, yeah. and we yeah. have some, we i mean we've obviously this is a little bit of a spoiler but meg is is going to be recurring we've kind of yeah. established that i would that. say that's a spoiler it was a cliffhanger it's, yeah of we, that. it's she's obvious that she's keep, keep going yeah. yeah and she's really the first one because the other two kind of significant female characters we've had have died yeah so yeah passes the bechdel test um third is our third is our lore check we kind of talked about this this is just like world building stuff so like ways they've established the world, ways they've either been consistent through the series or inconsistent. This is 
Yeah, there's not a lot of like lore. This is like a, the first time they kill like a pagan mm. god. Yeah. Nice. Remarkably easy for them to kill it during the day when it's not active. Well, they already we'll took say. they already took their two victims, so it's like, all right, well, now we just kill it whenever, I guess. Yeah. So. I mean, they do, like, briefly talk about when the boys are discussing, like, Sam is like, well, what do you think it is on the phone to Dean? And Sam is like, well, is it, like, spear of possession? That's true. Yeah, well, and Dean is like, yeah, no, the, it's a pagan god, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they kind of just, like, knew yeah. almost automatically. It's like, all right, how did you know that? Which, well, we you're... do see Dean go to like a professor or whatever and yeah talk about... well but he wanted to know like okay how do i kill it but okay so, so and some, what pagan god it was so some context um they one thing they have on them that's been established well in the first number of episodes is that they have a journal that john has been keeping for like 20 years uh, with like detailed notes and sketches and drawings of like everything he's hunted so they have that as a huge resource and they also is there also is a bit of a hunter's network so there are other hunters that they have had communication with okay so okay. there's a bit of a like community of resources and, and information and they are and dean particularly has basically spent his entire life yeah in this i world. was gonna say like how how long has he been on this on his own doing uh, this? he's been on his own slash with he's been hunting in some form uh it's going to be established since he was child really like he's okay. since he was a okay. child slash teenager and he's been hunting like significantly since he was probably about 17 or 18 okay so like all right that, that passes that yeah. that checks out okay yeah but yeah it's a fair question like based on this old episode he just kind of pulls that knowledge out of nowhere out of his ass yeah which i mean he also just pulls a lot of his ideas just sort of out of thin air. his ass out his of ass. his ass you yeah. can say it i know I this can is say going it. to get the explicit marker oh, already got that within the first 30 seconds i think of recording you're welcome <laughs> this is a podcast for grown-up people for people who mature enough to handle grown-up content. Children like me. Yes. <laughs> Number four is location. So this episode in the story takes place in um, the Lower Mainland. Nope, not in the story. Oh, in sorry, story, not it's in the story. Bur- it's Burkittsville. Burkittsville, Indiana. Burkittsville, Indiana, which none of us have been to. Got it in no, my notes. No stories from Burkittsville. Hold on, does it even exist? I think this is one that does, but I could be wrong. Wait, do they have fake cities that they go to? They use a mix of real and fake cities. They use more and more real as they go along, but they're, so the episode two, uh, episode two, the Wendigo episode is, that's a fake. Okay, there's a, there's a Burkittsville, it's Burkittsville, Maryland. Oh, so it's not in the same state. Come on, it's not even in Indiana. Yeah, they play pretty fast and loose with locations in this first season. That's so funny. I think it gives them a little bit more leeway for some things, but whatever. Uh, In terms of filming locations, they film the apple orchard is actually not an apple orchard. It's uh, apparently a hazelnut grove in Langley. So all of the carefully placed apples you'll notice are not on the trees. They're mostly in baskets and on the ground. Also, we should note that that's in British Columbia, Canada for listeners who might not be. (laughs) Yes, we've said before this show is mostly filmed in the Fraser Valley near the Vancouver area, but yes, good. Most, um, most things in the CW are filmed in Vancouver, yes. so it's that whole area is it's pretty diverse in terms of like yeah. like like you you were yeah. saying to to me earlier, Abigail, that like they use the same shot of like the, the same sign, road. the same road that they pass, which is in Delta, which is like in more of a rural like farm area that they use for driving into multiple places in Kansas, in in uh, Illinois. Illinois, like a lot of the flatter places. I don't even know. If, I don't think Illinois is that flat, but like no. a lot of the flatter places, places in the states that yeah. they do. So they reuse a lot of locations, which yeah. they had to over 15 years. Also in this episode, the Greyhound bus building, also in Langley. I've taken several buses from uh-huh. there. I think Sam also has taken yeah. several. Taken like a long ass hot bus ride to Kamloops and further yeah. on that. Also, it's like a typical like shitty grimy. ghetto bus stop. Exactly how it shows in the show. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very accurate. I'm like I can feel the feeling of being can, there. Can we take a moment of silence for the for uh, Greyhound Canada because it is no longer no longer. <laughs> it's here. true that bus stop is not yeah. there anymore. Well, no, like Greyhound in Greyhound Canada is just gone. Just doesn't exist. Yeah. I took so many Greyhounds as a teenager. I did too. I took quite a few. Yeah, yeah. not fun. No. Especially after that whole uh, Winnipeg thing where the guy chopped off that guy's head. Yeah, that wasn't so great. That no. was not a good moment for Graham. Real life, no. real life horror. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if uh, 
I wonder if Dean and Sam were on that case. No, they don't. Well, I, I guess it would have been in Canada. They don't, Canada. Really they don't really. Canada. No, they just don't really hunt in Canada. There's too much going on in the states. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> there is an place. episode where they are in Canada. Hell yeah, yeah, and they don't like it because it's a. It's I a don't very, like this show anymore. Yeah. No, it's because they're it's like, like very what? We're episode. in Canada. Well, it's because it's a episode. Spoiler alert! Where a spell <laughs> sounds so dumb when you explain it. A spell basically like traps them in like an alternate reality where they're in a TV show I called just Supernatural. watched this. And it's filmed in Canada. I just watched it. Because it's so, so oh. fucking funny. It's such a good episode. Okay. That sounds okay. like a great episode, but what I, the fuck? It is because they just let them be the characters, but in the world of the actors and in the world of the actors, the actors are assholes, which they aren't in real life. Like these yeah. actors are not assholes, yeah. but they make them out to be. And they like make fun of their like real they, like, life. Kill names, the show they, like, really they like kill the showrunner. They like kill the showrunner in the episode. It's yeah. very funny. I just watched that like two it's a, days it's ago. It's one of the like all time greats yeah. of the show. One of the Can I be on that episode? Yes. It's we're not gonna hit it for a real long time. It's, it's like, like season six. six I'll yeah. Probably be a well, but, it might be around. But yes, okay, I do have to just like say one line because I literally just watched it and I was like, oh, that's really funny because they're like driving in a car and like <laughs> Dean is like, where even are we? Asked like the driver mm-hmm. and then they the like driver. drive and you like see a shot of like a sign that says Vancouver. One of the highway signs. Like, yeah, one of the highway signs. signs. And he like leans over to Sam and he's like, dude, we're not even in America. And then he like rolls his eyes. <laughs> It's very funny. I hate every show. It's, it's very funny because for that one episode, they don't have to disguise the fact that it's Canada. Are now going to move into <laughs> pop culture references. We talked a little bit about the Star Trek reference. Uh, Dean also makes a Leatherface. I actually reference, missed, you, I missed the leather, like him actually saying Leatherface. He, so it's this quote. He says, "Let's just shag ass before Leatherface catches up." It's when it's near the end. Um, I think when they're chasing i think when they're i think when the three him and sam and emily are running to get away before when they've gotten free from dean's always cracking jokes when they're and he's very pop culture savvy savvy people have pointed out that the reason dean is very pop culture savvy is because he grew up in like motel rooms watching tv Mm. and that that like in a lot of ways raised him more than like a parent did and so like his bulk of references come from the fact that he just watched tv like mad growing up and so he interprets a lot of his life through those kind of tv tropes which is why he like makes has all these references like and he loves and dean also canonically loves horror sam hates horror movies and films and stuff and that's also canon but dean loves them and uses them a lot all right it's official i found it in the transcript Nah, in the morning, let's just shag ass before leather th- Leatherface catches up. And I appreciate it because Jacob actually, like, way earlier in the episode, before that quote happened, was like, oh, it's like Leatherface. Well, because his face, lo- it was literally it was made of it leather, and made- all of his body was leather. Yeah, I just appreciated it because I knew the reference was coming later. Yeah. Um, there's also a Scarecrow, uh, like a Wizard of Oz reference. Um, Vince says, you know, check it out, if only, if only I had a brain. That's the victim at the beginning of the episode. Like when he sees the scarecrow, he says Wizard of Oz. So like this episode, this episode's got some great ones. Uh, Dean also gives, the alias he gives in this episode is a Led Zeppelin alias. It's one of the members of Led Zeppelin, at which the um, character calls him on. And that's sort of, Jacob, in for context, that's that's a thing they, they, they give a lot of like pop culture and rocker aliases for all of across and so we had like the very first episode they were ford and hamill nice which was you know lots of that um so yeah for our last little mini segment today we're doing a little bit of predictions because jacob doesn't know what's happening next nope. and you've made you've mentioned a couple of things that you think are going to happen but i want to hear two kind of questions and sam you're free to kind of jump in um but obviously you know what's going to happen so yeah you can you can speak as you will. Uh, so my two questions are, what do you think is going to happen next? And what is your impression of the show as a whole from this episode? Uh, I'll start with the second question. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I knew exactly what I was getting into. I know the era that the show was made. Can't be horror. Yeah. Uh, really cheesy, like, horror, quote unquote, horror. Yeah. 
uh, show about supernatural creatures, whatnot. So, and it's early 2000s, so it looks like shit. <laughs> I don't know. It, I it like, uses I'm the same, for it. <laughs> it uses every single shot has the exact same uh, desaturation filter they on it. They were really obsessed. There is like this season particularly has this issue of like choosing a filter and being like, this is the filter for this episode and doing different ones to convey, which I think is a, is a mood choice in a lot of ways. And they'll do this later on in later seasons more tastefully where they have certain alternate realities that have like specific colored palettes, which is mostly really cool. But yeah, at this point it's, I think it's low budget and they're trying to set a like creepy mood and they just don't do it super creatively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's something that I, I'm pretty sure the I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's the whole the genre genre and but like it's just the same <laughs> filter which most movies like and they were very low budget yeah, yeah yeah and most movies and shows like have a color palette that they go for mm-hmm. but theirs is literally just like let's just turn the saturation down yeah. and that's their different episodes palette. and different episodes are going to vary so I'll be interested oh, yeah, yeah, to hear yeah, what I'm you sure. think I'll be interested to, sure hear, be interested to hear what you think about that element in other episodes where yep. you because you'll notice different like saturation will be up or it'll be down or it'll be really this color yeah. <laughs> but i think i i think i get like it's a horror more like classic horror type yeah episode so like yeah i went for that sort of well thing. and this show pulls a lot from similar shows of the era like the x files and things like that like in yeah. terms of its inspiration and shows that it's kind of contemporary with and they all look the same and they all look yes. the same um and as for the first episode or first question uh yeah uh i have no fucking clue i think <laughs> let's go let's go totally left field i think meg's gonna catch them i think she's going to kill dean but then uh sam in his rage is going to uh is going to uh figure out that papa jeff has been working with this mag all along and that uh he knows uh what slash who actually killed them and then he's going to uh use a confundus spell on his on papa jeff and or sorry not confundus imperious <laughs> uh, we're just gonna entirely break genre and i'm not done yet <laughs> and then he's going to get him to show him how to resurrect dean and that's going to be the next six episodes six seasons of like trying to get dean back oh so they're playing the long game yeah 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 yeah, okay. yeah yeah there's lots of like lots of little little things happen so it's just um, gonna be like a sam solo show trying to get dean back for a while that's my guess that's your guess yeah okay well totally serious by the way yes definitely i can see that in your face and yeah. you can't see that if you're listening but my face is very serious right now very serious <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh at me Sorry. Sam's over here just trying to hold it together I tried really hard and it just came out and Sam as a as a veteran listener uh-huh. any um thoughts or comments well I can't really comment on that. well you can't give an actual you can't uh don't reveal anything but... no oh can I interject with a question with... yes what did you well like of all the all the episodes like how would you how do you feel about this episode hmm this episode really um all of the like tension that the brothers were feeling like it all comes to a head kind of in this episode whereas like they have this huge blow up where they've kind of had arguments before but this was like a big one they part ways that like yeah they actually like part ways and like Mm -hmm. i don't know the spoiler alert like that happens a few times they're very dramatic oh i'm sure like that's what that's i was saying really is like, <laughs> that's that's what i was saying is like i'm I, I yeah was, i knew that this would just kind of keep happening yeah, yeah. it, it happens keep... in different ways for yeah. different reasons yeah. but interpersonal conflict is the name of the game here. yeah i was gonna there's say there's a lot, a lot of sexual tension but they're brothers so that would be weird oh oh it's yeah whole oh, thing. oh yeah the fandom can we're just gonna make it really try clear here really hard that to... there are acceptable characters and we're gonna we might get some we might get some people not liking us for this, but there are ships that we are happy to sail with, and yes. there are ships we are not comfortable with, and they are brothers. Yes, we're gonna leave it there. Thank so you. we're just establishing this. Yes, we do not condone, and and also be, do not ship at fair, all. We have many other 
very good options for both of them. Yes. For Many characters to the show. them with. And we've talked about that already. We're going to, in two episodes, we're going to have one of my favorite pairings. Damn. I'm very excited about it. We've already recorded it. We need to find something else to say so that we're not <laughs> ending talking about incest. We need to steer out of that skin. How about bestial? No, no. Nope. Mind. Jacob. <laughs> um, not There's, helping. I have a list of things we could talk about. What are you looking forward to seeing? Like, obviously you've seen everything, but what are you like, what like episodes or themes are you looking forward to seeing? Have a go. Well, this first half of the season has really given us a good look at Sam and who he is. The second half is going to give us a few episodes that are really going to delve into Dean's character. Mm. So we're going to get a flashback episode, not for six or seven episodes. We're going to get a um, the, an episode with a former love interest. We're going to get, um, and we're going to get one of my, probably in my top five, and I've said this before, probably in my top five episodes of the whole show is actually episode 12. It's the next episode it's called Faith. It's brilliant. Um, but yeah, and it's and it's like a thesis in like Dean's yeah. who he is, and it's the okay. first episode we really get that centric him. So I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm also really looking forward to the way they're going to continue to show us who John is, and the, they're going to we're getting closer to we've we've done a bunch of filler episodes like filler. They've given us good stuff, but they've been filler like in terms of the monsters are not recurring. But now we've got Meg, who's going to be recurring, and we're going to start actually really driving a bit more of a plot to the end of the season for the second half. And I'm excited about, about that. Mm. Nice. All right, well, uh, another good good end to the, to the podcast. I finished my beer, and I didn't die. An unexpectedly hilarious combination in Jacob and Sam. So Ooh. thank you both for That's joining great. me today. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll do this again, because yes. clearly we have struck gold here. And to anyone who is listening, thank you for coming along for the ride. We wish you a peaceful road until we meet again. Did you want to say something, Jacob? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing some uh, some of my own content stuff in the future, including yes. a podcast. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna be having some some stuff up on YouTube. You could find me at, at my I think just my name, Jacob Hagen, J A C O B H A G A N. Everyone gets that wrong. We will also put this in the show notes so that you can have the correct spelling for yeah. this content. Yes, I don't check have, them out. I don't have a lot right now. I'm not going to be pushing quite a bit and for a bit, but you can go watch what I've got. And yeah, I'll be doing a, a comedy podcast coming up. You can see Sorry more of a, train wreck, a better train wreck podcast than this <laughs> because Abigail was able to keep us in check for the most part. So. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll get to go fully out with your comedy. Yes, absolutely. And, and we'll, I'd love and to we'll have I'd love to have these guys on as uh, yes. guests on that one eventually too. Yes, we're we'll excited to be. Yeah. Any final thoughts from either of you? Let's supernatural. That I don't know. Do they have a catchphrase? Um, they have many catchphrases. Many. Um. <laughs> many. Saving people, hunting things, family business. All right, I get it. All right, family business. Family business. Woo. <laughs> next week we will be discussing season one episode 12 faith through the theme of connection Aww. a note to our listeners this episode was recorded prior to our season three name change, where we went from Driver Picks the Podcast to Saving People, Queering Things. For all of our new social media platforms, visit queeringthingspodcast.com.